and welcome back my fellow scouts to a custom scenario here at 3rd Days Reforged. Today's a nice 4v4 I believe, Siege Battle replay today, created by or sent to me by Eclipse2500 of the Dark Cloud, who is actually committing Umba today. Now, if you guys want to see your own replay featured here on this channel, you can send it to my email at scoutsforentertainment at gmail.com. You can send it to me directly on the Discord via my Discord ID, direct message. You can join my Discord server Scouts for Reconnaissance, where you can post your total replays into the Battle Replay sub-channel you'll find on the Discord, or you can tag me in any 3rd Days Reforged replay you post on the 3rd Days Discord as well. I also have various funding options available, if you'd like to support my work, that's really help out with the channel and the Discord, but if you want to help out with the YouTube algorithm, which is greatly appreciated, don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe of course if you haven't already, tick that bell for notifications so you never miss a fight, and leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. With that, let's go through Eclipse's alliance today. So, as I said, he's Umba. He's got some narrow, narrow sentinels here, some harbages of Casimir. We've got two units here, Belicate Axe Guard. We've got some Alcoronas Legion here, running off Fords. We've got maybe four units here of Alcoronas Legion. We have here some Belicate Footmen in two units. We've got some Corsair Infantry and more Belicate Footmen behind them. Looks to be three units here of Corsair Infantry and two units of Corsair Black Guards. And I do not see Casimir's Rangers. Oh, do I? No, I don't. Nor do I see any Corsair Crossbows, which is a little unusual. But it is what it is. Over here we have his ally, which is a rune, commanded by Mevin. He's got some Eastron clansmen here, armored up all the way. We've got some Lurk Sarin behind them, two units, some back off Sapphire Blazemen. We've got some Lurk Gambrim here, two units, some Dragon's Wrath Guildsmen, I think two units of them. Some Lurk Flagrim, I'm gonna say three units already. Uh, we've got some Lurk Narin, I think one or two units of them. Kamul's Chosen, Eastron Crossbows armored up, looks to be, I think maybe two units of them. Maybe. We got some Battle of Tribesmen there armored up also. It looks like Rune's establishing some sort of boxed formation to protect his army because we've got enemy cab hovering in the distance there. Gondor, commanded by Daba Duba. Jeez, try saying that five times. Alright, Dunning commanded by Mr. Seekman. We've got some Dunning Clansmen here. Some Half Orc Spear Guard. I think one, two units are there. Make that three. I think that's, I think that's three there. We've got some Bandits here, Javelins. I think two units of them. We got some Troll Shrew Axe Towers there. I think one unit there, one unit there, so two. Behind them, we have some Corsair Infantry Eclipses already here, jeez. We got some Half Orc Bangar over there. Looks to be three units. We got here some Spears of Orthanc. And some Dane Veterans here as well. Some Blackwolds, one or two units of them. I'm gonna guess two units. I don't see any Snaga skirmishes. We'll find out later. I don't think Dunland has Snaga skirmishes. I could be wrong about that. We have a second Dunland army here, commanded by Froggy, everyone's favorite amphibian. We have Half Orc Spear Guard here. Looks to be one, two, three units there. Make that four. We have some Riders of War Tank there, crossbow on horseback essentially. Riders, yep. The Spears of War Tank on horseback, I meant really to say. We have here some Bandits, some Half Orc Bang Guard. Looks to be, I think, two units there. Make that another two there for four total. We got here the Spears of Orthanc, which have killed a bunch of Gondor infantry. Looks to be... Jeez. Imperial Riders, that looks like there. What happened? Looks to be Imperial Riders over there, okay. These are commanded by... Doctor Doctor 2. It says Riders are firing. But Doctor is probably just going in and out of his range, just sort of... annoying those Riders there of Orthanc to no end. Over here we have some General Archers. Looks to be... One unit there, some men at arms. Next, Dronel Pikem, not armored up at all yet. We have some Edon Habitiers. We've got some Peril Champions. Edon men at arms again. And I don't see any other unit here. I see some men up here, of course, which are some Edon men at arms. Enemy cab though, hovering behind Eclipse down south, as you can see there. Some Tear there, Marksman, at a great angle there on the enemy. We got here some Peril Champions. Over here we have some more Tear there, Marksman. And some Dronel Swordsmen protecting a pass up into the mountains. So the attackers can come this way. But they probably need two players over here to effectively salt these two choke points and get through. One will probably struggle. Over here we have some Blackstone Renegades, some Haven Guard, and some Dronel Archers over here. So we got here some Numinous Gate Guards, Arthur Name, commanded by Inarius, a veteran of Reforged. We got here some, as I said, Numinous Gate Guards. Over here, some Wardens of the North, AP Archers. Uh, I suppose we'll head back up in the mountains over here. There's a unit up here. 
which is... Nah, that's just the new mouse gate guards. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, some Arthurane Pikes. Not armoured up, however. Numerine Cohort, commanded by Infinity. We've got some Evidence Beam in here. Not armoured up. Some... Look, doesn't look like a lot of armour upgrades have been applied here today. Some men at arms, Evident Archers, Knights of Numinus, some Dismounted Knights of Numinus, Evidence Beam. We've got here their enemy just facing off against them right now. Bellic Archers from Infinity are currently firing. Some Bellic Footmen over here. I think I've already commented on the Evidence Beam. We've got some uh, uh, Bellic Footmen there, some Numerian Cohort. Some more Numerian Cohort. Make that three units in the area now. And over here we have Gondor, as I said, coming by Dabba. We've got some Gondor Spearmen, two units there. Pelican Marines, looks to be two units of them. Gondor Archers, Gondor Infantry, near nothing, Honor Guard. More Infantry, two units. Some Gondor Spearmen, also two units. And if there are any other units, I cannot see them. Could maybe here, Raven Helms of Care Andros, and a Catapult, which is not firing at the moment. So, and we also have some Seafarers and Nemos up here. Jeez, these guys just multiply. Axemen of Losnark, up here. We've got here some more seafarers, pharaohs and swordmasters, Royal Legion of Amenolos, and some Wardens of the White Tower. So this is obviously the capital, or the palace, that they're protecting. This is a custom map, and the first time I've seen this map, which is really, really good. This is a great map. Plenty of angles here for the defenders to use to their advantage. This is probably better off being a 3v5 siege than a 4v4, so we'll see how well it plays out. Gondor has archers standing by, but not firing because they're out of range at the moment. We strong clansmen standing by. The crossbows here could be moved up to essentially shred the Gondor spearmen, but maybe that's what Stubb is counting on, trying to use his ammunition a bit too early before maybe they get to more elite troops. But if you want to get through this checkpoint quickly, then using the crossbows is the way to do it, or the back of the We've got Belligar archers from Infinity over here. They're shooting at somebody. Belega Footman versus Belega Footman. Although clearly Infinity is winning this fight. Not for much longer though, once those Coronas Legion get in the mix. So it appears to be the centre where combat is first underway. We've got Envy Calvary just running around the back so of Eclipse's force. I was wondering when we'll see a response from the defenders, and Infinity has sent up some maneuvering his shield guard. Finbar should still win that fight though. We've got some Haven Knights over here as well, okay. Herald Riders down to 18, so they've lost a couple there. And over here we have some Pinnacle and Cavalry being chased by the Riders of Orthanc. Got to be careful though with the Pinotail and Cavalry, could get a good charge there into the Riders if Foggy's not careful. Which is why probably Foggy isn't charging in because he's too busy with his, with his Cav to try and fight on multiple fronts. He wants to try and resolve one battle at a time. He doesn't want to risk losing his Riders. He's protecting his allies' rear, that's why he's sort of focusing on this part of the battle right now. Here comes the Pinotail and Cavalry. They probably got to pull back. They're not pulling back. Cap down to 16. It's probably better for riders to stop firing on the Pinnacle Gown Cavalry. They're pretty bunched up. And they're coming after him. Belega Pikeman, potentially under fire. Eclipse is just setting up a rear guard there for his men. Now, who are the riders going to be firing at? Well, obviously, the Pedal Riders are the closest target, so it makes sense they're going to be shooting at them. It looks like Rune is engaged. Yeah, Gondor's actually charged into Rune here, not the other way around. And he's also charged men into the Easter on crossbows there. 
Side rim have got to be diverted. Moving quick to change targets. Not quick enough. But he's obviously got the crossbows here in guard mode. And they're hammering the left flank of Gondor. Like Sam, we've got to sort themselves out here. They keep coming in and going out of the fight. They want to get rid of Gondor troops here quickly. They've probably got to set up their Belkov tribesmen. Okay, Rune seems content on just sending up his melee forces for now. We're getting a bit of fire there from the Gondor archers. But right now, it's 5 to 4%. We got here the Northern Honor Guard being sent up already. These guys do inspire morale. He's pulling them in the center of the line. What's interesting though is that they are pretty exposed to the Eastron crossbows, so this has got to be Nerva's next target. It's, it has to be. Yeah, he's shooting this direction. Although I think he's still going after the Gondor Spearmen, personally. Pelican Marines, they're trying to fire into somebody. Okay, they're targeting Rune's line here. Crossbows might need to change targets and take out those Pelican Marines. Pelican tribes are also being sent up. Late in the room targeting the Pelican Marines. How fast are they falling? Not that fast, not fast enough. Okay, back off Trizen though. Are firing into the north in the honor guard. Okay, it looks like the crossbows are targeting the backs here of the north in honor guard. So Dabba's gotta be really careful there. Pelican Marines are, are taking that fire like a champion. Very few going down quickly. The right flank of Rune in serious jeopardy of buckling. The line here is razor thin. Upside for Rune is it makes it easier for the Buckle Trident to hit the Northern Honor Guard, but that's the only down only on the upside there, sorry. Rise of all think. Hang on. Still battling away here. They're whittling down the enemy cavalry. Froggy's done a good job here. He's sort of killing them cavalry by oh, sorry, soldier by soldier. Anyway, Eclipse's progress here has been a bit slow, but he's managed to gain some ground here, outflanking the Numeron Shield Guard. So we've got a fresh unit here by like Vulcan being sent up. Eclipse also stacking his ranks with another unit of Belligal Footman. 12 to 12, pretty even. Just went to 13. Yeah, see. The downside to outflanking your enemy can expose you to enemy javelins and archers and crossbows and whatnot. All missile units, really. He's trying desperately to break the Numeron Shield Guard so he can progress further inward and shut down those archers. The Shield Guard aren't breaking. Has Froggy begun his assault yet? No, not yet. Up here? No. Nothing going on there. Okay, Mr. Sinkman though has begun his assault. 
He's got here some Acronization from Eclipse mixed in here with some Bang Arthur Vanguard. Trollshot Axos firing the axes into the Arthur Dane Pikes. It's fairly decent fire there. We've got, I think, just made a nice of Numenas already committed as well, so people are committing their elites a lot earlier than expected these days. They down to 45, so they're taking some casualties from enemy archers. And so Mr. Sigma has brought up a fresh unit. If they can keep the javelin fire or the axe fire, then eventually those uh, Arthur Nate pikes there will crumble. Eighteen to twenty two percent. I'm impressed with the ability of the Trollshire Axos to lob their axes over the heads of their friendlies into the enemy like that. And score mostly hits. It's another unit of Trollshire Axos, he must have bought three of them. We got black wads now being sent up. Probably go toe to toe there with the dismantled knights of Numinus. Okay, no one's just fighting over here. Belgar archers wasting their ammunition, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Eclipse is trying to make some inroads in here. He's almost through one choke point. Rune, though, appears to be the one that's beaten his opponent. Or at least the first wave of it. Gondor has see, severely exhausted themselves. Most of their troops here have broken and routed, already fallen back. This leaves Infinity wide open. So I'm a little bit surprised Rune isn't searching for it, and possibly he is going to do that right now. As he should. He should surge forward here, move his forces around, and begin trying to outflank Numenor and Arthurdane, assisting Mr. Sinkman and Eclipse as they advance further in as well. This should push all the defenders to the second level almost instantaneously. Dolemroth, for the most part, on the right flank, or the attackers anyway, is already in that level. He's already in the mountain ranges mostly. So his forces don't have to go too far. And we've got Gondor Archers there, which are looking to maybe pepper the Runic forces if he attempts their outflanking maneuver. He's just got to try and spread out his troops as he moves in. He's probably going to send up some forces to try and force Gondor off the ridge here to protect his forces down below as they move towards Infinity's men. So it's just probably thinking, what troops do I need to send up there? How can I? What troops do I need to break through to force back? Force them back. Can they handle the Pelagon Marines and the Raven Helms up here already? Are they safe from the catapult as well? Multiple things for Rune to think about. He has a few big decisions ahead of him actually in the next few minutes. Or simply does he send his own forces behind Eclipse and Mr. Seatman and help them push forward that way? Does he support them from the back? So we might have a fresh unit of our Legion coming up. Back of Axe over there down to 13, so 
they're pretty much almost finished here. And we've also got some Corsair Blackguard surprisingly being brought up. I mean, we must be able to use the elevation there to fire on Numenor's men. Yep. Oh, well, they got to the Belgar Archers. Surely the Belgar Archers would be the better target, but they're out of ammunition now. Hearing one soldier there say, Heave, heave. Yeah, probably a waste of ammunition. Mainly because they're out of ammunition. The Belgar Archers there. He'd probably like to fire on this blob, but maybe he doesn't have the angle on him. Again, he keeps winning this fight, just chipping away. He'll break through eventually. Mr. C, man, surging forwards here with some Dalian veterans and some, is it Corsair infantry as well? Yes. And some Half Orc Spear Guard. Infinity has one unit Belgic footman over here, and we have some more Numenon cohort moving up. We've got Grey Company here as well. Yeah, that's good fire. That'd be devastating to Dunlin's forces. Infinity's men probably copying a bit of damage there as well. The Knights of Numa's charging into him, I think. It's a fairly healthy chunk. Still got 140 men though, so... And they were wavering, but they seem to have reformed. I think the Rise of One Thing are chasing the last um, enemy cavalry unit in the in the back there. So Froggy's definitely they're not giving up the fight just yet. Snagger skirmishes up here. What are they firing into? Okay, going after the Dornell Pikeman. Still got 120. Froggy should probably let the Snaga do their work before setting up more, more troops. Try and weaken the Pikeman a little bit. Wearing them down. The Lamarth Arts is struggling to bring down the Saga Skirmishes. The enemy are badly blooded. They have lost half their men. That's a bit more fire now. A damage might be done here. Snaga might have achieved their purpose. So yeah, Dunlin can bring Snaga skirmishes. I just didn't see them before. Two of their marksmen though from Doctor using a lot of ammunition to try and bring down this Snaga. Lord, preserve 
us. We have lost half of our men. Oh, that's not too good. Don Lamarth is retreating en masse. Well, these troops here, they're not broken. But boy, does that retreat look organized and glorious. So many soldiers running through the valley. Peel the Riders broken behind. So, Froggy has managed to break through in the mountains and on and down below. Anaris is retreating as well, as you've got Mr. Sigma breaking through on this side here. With the help of his Belga Pikeman eclipses and Alcarna's Legion. So, Dunland and Umbo are working pretty well here together. Nuno Kaiwadi had broken at 74. That is horrible news there for Affinity. Should have pulled him back when he had a chance. And it looks like Rune has actually sallied up. That got Tribesman pity out of ammunition. Kamul's chosen on the front lines here. Could be facing the wrong direction. The Dragon's Wrath Guild's been moving up. I don't know if they have a good angle though on the enemy. And that is pretty much a full unit. Is Catapult still here? Appears to have moved. We've got Warns means Ethel. Oh, AP Archers. Could bring down the entire work side room if they wanted to. So we're into some low flag room over there. He's from crossbows, 129. And we also got here some lights of Numinous and Grey Company charging into the low flag room. Not getting too many casualties though. Arthur Dane's cat here is pretty weak. Okay, Eclipse and Sneak. Almost finished these guys off. The Shaken. Not wavering just yet. See, they're at 39, they're now wavering. Nevin's probably pleading for Eclipse and Sneak to hurry up. Get through these guys. Get into Infinity's Arches. Let's try and kill them faster. Lose less men in the process. Alright, so Froggy's up here. He's made his way a bit further than I thought he would have at this point. He's through the, he's through the main defense. You know, he's trying to maybe go to some enemy fire out of Doctor. Now, this is probably where Doctor will choose to hold. He can use the elevation there for his archers to fire at Froggy's forces as he advances. He's also got here some more tier there marksmen. Nice angle here for the archers to fire on the attackers as they move up. Even from this angle here, so there's no easy way for Froggy to really approach this. He needs the support of his allies to get through this. And not support as in backing up as he comes up this way. His allies need to break through on the other angles. The other ways. This ramp is probably their best bet. They can get some crossbows, some archers maybe to shoot at the enemy forces up top there on the ledge. It's easy for them to return fire while they cover their own melee troops as they move up the ramp here. The catapult is still there. I thought maybe he moved it away before. Looks like Dabba's just sort of delaying Rune a bit more. They're advancing slowly but surely.
Axel Osnuck, while they're AP, with no armor upgrades whatsoever, they should actually do okay considering there's no missile fire coming at them right now. I mean, they're a shock unit. We're about at the halfway point, just under. Also got a break there from the Gondor Spearman, yep. Gondor Archers should be slaughtered so shortly. We're going to run trying to hit the Axel Losnark as they retreat. Okay, yeah, those guys are going to be slaughtered. Okay, Rune's made his way up to the second level now. Two levels down, two to go. And these next ones are not going to be easy. The Seafarer's Linnemos, he just needs to wait, hold off, let the enemy bunch up their forces as they try to break through this choke point. And it's good night, Irene, for the attackers. This is definitely a kill box in every sense of the word. This approach here will not be easy. Up here, again, this is probably the approach that Rune should take. Probably ignore this entire area and not play into the defender's hands by approaching it. This is probably where Rune should strike. It's got cover from the from the defenders. As long as he has melee troops to force his way up here, he can get to the second level without having to worry about too many of even this, the javelins or any archer unit that the defenders could bring to bear on. And once he's through, it could force the defense to retreat to the final level. So Doctor is moving up, giving up ground here to Froggy. I think that was a mistake, and I think Doctor didn't need to withdraw, at least for the moment. He had Froggy dead to rights if Froggy tried to approach him. This was a spot for Doctor to cover. He didn't have to retreat. At least not yet. So yes, we've entered a bit of a lull phase here. So I hope you, you guys can go and maybe grab a drink. Enjoy yourselves. I might do a small cut here. might just see what's what. Give you guys some time if you want. So, as I said, Seafair is just standing by. Infinity just and gone to the waiting for the attackers to come to this kill box that they've set up. Now, if the attackers are smart about this, they will not come this way, I reckon. Don't know what Mevin's going to do just yet. The Belka Trajan though, 26, these guys here, do they have any ammunition left? It does not look like it. The Drange Rack Gilsman, this is a full contingent, I believe. Belka Trajan, yet to throw their javelins. Like some Rim, no, oh, it's a heavily depleted unit on the way out. Gamp Rim, looking pretty healthy. And that could be it there for Mevin. This could be all he has left. He's got some Eastern crossbows around here somewhere, I know that for sure. There's like Flag Rim. Oh, hopefully uh, he still has his Eastern crossbows. He did last time I checked. We'll keep our eye out for him. Eclipse just stationing up his forces, really. Did he start to send any up the ramp yet? He has. Oh, Kronos Legion is up here. Yeah, so he's got his all depleted units in the front. Probably the way you should do it. He's got some burning clansmen here from Mr. Saint Man, probably to act as the uh, meat shield here for the force to move up. Wonder if he's going to use them like that. But they get to move, so the attackers are sort of talking to themselves, finding out where each other's or which, well, where they are. Try to find out where everyone is. Coordinate their efforts. So right now the attackers are trying to find out where they all are. Well, so right now the attackers are trying to find out the positions of where each other is at, and coordinate the assault on the final levels. It would seem. And it looks like Froggy can actually station up some archers and some missile units up here. 
putting the defenders at a slight disadvantage. We have Wanderers on the model up here. They still have their bows out. I think maybe a full ignition. I don't think they've fired a single shot just yet. No, I haven't seen it yet. The Snugger Skirmishers here. Still got their javelins. Very tired though. Bandits also, I don't think have used up any javelins yet. So yes, this is where we'll do the cut guys and we'll sit, come back once battle begins. Alright, we're back everyone. We've got the Lake Narim from Mevin firing up this way. It seemed like Mevin and Eclipse were thinking about sending forces towards this direction. Now, I don't think the Lake Narim can actually set these um, catapults ablaze. They're not shooting firing ammunition. It's just the effect that their ammunition has when they fire it. The answer is you're trying to provide a bit of a shield there for the Arthurian Pikes. But um, you need crossbows there to get through those pikes more quickly. If they send up any units this way, it might as well be like one at a time, and even if that, in loose formation. Now, what's good to see here is Eclipse is setting up one or two units here, this way. We've got some depleted Evan Archers guarding it though. Should be able to sweep them aside. And if Eclipse can set up enough men here, if he can get through. We can go this direction here, you can force the seafarers and the moss off the hill here, along with the warden's minis ethel as well. And push Gondor and Numenor to the final level from there. These forces over here aren't stranded if Eclipse manages to take this area. They can go up the ramp here, up the hill, all the way around, head to the final level that way. These guys here are not isolated in the event they lose this side. Infinity really containing himself there. Doesn't want to spring his little trap. Spears of War thank for Mr. Sneakman all the way over here now. The Seafarers could be trying to target the Spears of War thank. Or well, of course they're black guys, I don't know if they can reach him. They're reloading. Okay, here we go. Yeah, here. Yeah. Targeting the Corsair Black Guards. Taking down the about 20 of them there. Maybe you should have stationed the Dunning Clansmen along this little ramp section. These guys here targeting another unit, of course, their black guards. Seafarers here racking up the kills. Belga Pikeman down to 128. Gondor Archers here in tight formation, firing on the Dragon's Wrath Guildsman. Froggy sent up one or two units there on the right flank. Down to 73. Now yeah, about 70. That's Warren's Miss Ethel Fire right there. They're going after the Dragon's Wrath Guildsman. Now they're going after the Lurk Flag Rim, maybe. Here's these strong crossbows up there. Yeah, they're trying to bring down the Dragon's Wrath Guildsman. I 
Okay, got the numerous gate guards up here. This is where the Corsa Black Guards need to try and get an angle here. Sneak probably needs to. Oh, these guys here are broken. Let's bring out the Black Guards again. Eclipse moving too fast there. The opportunity has presented itself here that he can target pretty much the whole unit now with his Corsa Black Guards. And we're seeing them come back now. Naris has to pull out. No, Mr. Sigma is getting in his way. We've got Wanderers and Immortal firing this way now. Wanderers tearing him up. Mr. Sneakman probably shouldn't have moved up his forces there. He got in the Black Guard's way, they couldn't fire. Yeah, they had to get through this section quickly. The Wanderers have gone silent. Why have they gone silent? Trying to conserve ammunition. Possibly. Well, because they stopped, it's actually giving Mr. Sinkman a chance here in this fight. He's caught the numerous gate guards out of formation, and a lot of them have fallen as a result. Okay, what's, what's left of some sentinels there? Moving up, 31. Let's have a look. What's Froggy up to? Of course, it's just sort of hanging back for now. Not if he has any missile units left. He's got the catapult, that'd be handy. Spears of War Tank, very handy as well. Yeah, that, that um, Spears of War Tank unit and the catapult should be able to get some great hits here on the on the Lamroth, Don Dr. Doctor's forces. The risk of course is the tier there marksman I think setting the catapults ablaze. That's the risks. Catapults wind it up. He's going to try and fire at something. Maybe the Royal Legion of Amenolos. Well, this, this one looks good. Nice hit. Or oh, could this one be short? That's still a great hit. Talking about 20 casualties. Gate guards there down to 23, so they're falling fast. Trolls through Axel is there, getting some good hits on the tier at their marksman, trying to drive them back. The Wanderers. Probably should have fired earlier, a little bit earlier. And since they got the Wanderers on the run, the attackers are recommitting another wave of forces, trying to get them in there before the Wanderers turn around and fire. Black holes will buy them some time, not a whole lot. They're forcing them back enough for now. The Wanderers could move back here, get a good angle on the Eclipse's Battle of Axe Guard. Not so much the Black Wolves, they risk hitting their own men. But um, if the attackers do blow up their forces here, then the Wanderers can tear them apart. Do you know, Troll Slayers, I imagine, wouldn't have the best angle. Yep. So I'm down here. That's pretty much a full unit of Belega Python. They're very tired though, however. And it looks like Mr. Sneakman has two units here of Spears of War Thank. Unfortunately for him, none of them are firing. Okay, they're firing now. We've got the Wardens Miss Ethel though firing on them too. Or is it the Wardens of the North? Wardens of the North. It's 160 crossbow bolts, give or take.
I think they were aiming for the new running cohort there and the catapult just got in the way. Eclipse is trying to get into that catapult. He's risking his entire unit here. Although it has opened up the Axe Lost Knock and the Nurin Shield Guard there to the crossbows from the Spears of War tank. So those, guys, those units they need to hurry up and start firing. No, oh, these guys here just broke. That's a big loss there. Eclipse, that was a, a huge gamble that just didn't pay off for him. 60 to 70%. Okay, pretty much a full unit. We've got seafarers moving up. Like Sam Raymond, moving up, 42. If they have ammunition, they probably need to turn around. Jeez. Mr. Saintman was sort of gambling his general there. We saw the ones of North firing at that unit before. That's where his general is. He could have been killed. He was lucky to still have him. Carlot moving forward again, mainly to be used as a shield, I reckon. There's a lot of bandits. There's a lot of javelins. Still at 65. We've got crossbow fire, we've got javelins, and the unit is still standing. Probably should get him to try and throw it again. Very juicy. Yeah, right on cue, Eclipse. I was thinking Eclipse would probably turn around and charge into the rear there of the Seafarers, and he did exactly that. He knows what he's doing. But unfortunately for him, the course of infantry, which probably he was banking on to hold the enemy at bay here while he did that rear charge, has just broken on him, opening up his Cashmere's Rangers here to being charged into the rear themselves, and Eclipse could lose his general here any second now. Is trying to overrun the forces in the area. It looks like an is trying to pull out again. I'm just trying to stop myself from being overwhelmed and surrounded. There's the wardens up there. See, they almost look like godlike statues standing on the ledge there with that pose. To the other side. Only half the enemy force remains. Charles Jackso is firing away. He's got bandits over there as well. Who's shooting them? Oh, it's from the bandits. Mm, strange targets there. Froggy obviously sees them worthy of using Jabin Fire on. Not the best idea. These guys here are pretty weak. But then again, a lot of Dunland's forces own melee troops are, you know, mid to low tier. And so maybe he feels like by targeting these guys, he's giving his troops the best advantage he needs to sort of push forward and take down more men. Sixty nine to seventy nine here. Trollstra Axel is at 80. A 
Can't tell if they're out of ammunition or not. Wonders on the roll here. Have a great angle on the froggy's line. Alright, they're firing all the forces here. Bandits all broken, the unit of 104. Okay, it's from Froggy's own catapult here. He's trying to hit the Wanderers. No luck. Look at Haven guy right here. No, still too high. Should he be targeting the Dolan Rod General? Can he hit the Dolan Rod General where he is? He should be able to. They got the Spears of War thing trying to kill him, trying to take him out. All 70 can fire on them. Down to 12. There's a the general. He's not hit the general yet. All right, they're targeting the troll show axe stores. Well, they are AP. The spears of war thing. They probably should be able to hit the wanderers where they are. Nicely done there. Jeez, what's firing at these guys now? Trosh Jackson is firing against Snuggers Game, which is a full unit. Now firing. Rogues managed to erode his enemy. And can you continue his march upwards? It's funny that Doctor Doctor is continuing with this fight. He can't win. He can win based on range. He can just move outside the Spears' range and fire into him that way. But instead, he's staying put and trying to play on Froggy's terms, which is a losing battle. He's still got ammunition. He's got to pull this unit back. We going over here. The defenders have held the ramp. It looked like the attackers were going to break through. They held. Got done any clansmen there? Seventy-eight to eighty-four. Spears of War thing moving up. I don't know. If both units have used their ammunition. Looks like one of them still has their bolt, their crossbows out. Black Siren and Belkov Trajan, Belkov Sapphire Blazon being shot in the back by the Wardens of Minas Ethel. Looks like some have their swords out, so they're running out of ammunition. You strong crossbows also here. These guys here also have their crossbows out. Mr. Sigman probably just has to wait for Mevin to get up here. And then he can divide his forces, he can charge some forces there towards the enemy at the same time, outflank the seafarers and Moss, force them out of position. And maybe into the firing line here, with the Spears of War thing. These guys here, this cat all these catapults destroyed by Troll Shrew Axe Sowers, guaranteed. These bandits, they're out of ammunition. They don't care if Gondor charges them. And 
gondola is charging out here. I wouldn't think this is the best idea in the world. Wards of the White Tower here going after the Spears of War Think. They're not going to try and let Mr. Sneakman fire where he is. They're going to chase him up the hill. Naris and Dubber here trying to double team Mr. Sneakman. Maybe we better get down here pronto. What's maybe I'm doing with these forces here? Getting them behind the hill. Okay, I didn't know Mr. I didn't know Mervin had Dragon's Wrath crossbows, so maybe I didn't, I just forgot. Because so I haven't seen him use them just yet. Okay. Sneakman just killed his general. Grandrace crossbows can be moved into position. They can target. They can target and take out the one, the ones of the north. Also, we've got reinforcements here from Infinity. All can be destroyed by the Dragon's Wrath crossbows. Let's go swing them to the left. Give them some space to fire. We've got Phasm Swordmasters there. They're probably the unit to target. Well, you're in Shield Guard first. Then the Phasm Swordmasters. Better hurry up. Took out some. Not all. Our allies have a fled the field like cowards. We must look to our own men now. Okay, victory there for the defenders. Things did seem to be going the attacker's way there. Unfortunately, Mr. Sneak Man was just caught out in a trap. Our army is tiring. They gotta watch out though. They've got Haven Knights coming around the corner there. Our foolish general, our men are fleeing the battle. Rally them, or victory runs away on their heels. Bit of pressure now is on these Dragon's crossbows to perform. Crazy Sword Master surging forward. Oh, they're trying to fire. We've got about 10 firing. So we've got more Do 9 Troll Slayers moving up. And these guys here have their javelins. That's where I see down to 18. The Eastern Crossbows here should be targeting the Pharisees and Swordmasters. There you go. Wounds of the White Tower moving to engage the Eastern Crossbows though. Like poking a bear doesn't seem to be doing much, does it? Even though he's getting a bit of damage, it's not doing enough. 
Look, they're looking, sailing out, looking to destroy the last of Froggy's forces. Froggy didn't take too many casualties up here. Misfire took out a bunch of his own troops. Ninety to eighty nine. Oh, that's what he needed. He needed that. It broke him. They go test after him. Try and kill him if they can. Rise of all think. Try and do their own cycle charges. Doing alright. Then I trust that it's falling back to the main force. We got Duna Rangers up here, a full contingent. I don't know if they used any of their ammunition. It looks like they have. But still, it's pretty much a full unit there. He's never almost dead yet. And his forces are broken. His general is fleeing the battlefield. That's him there. That cost F5 Blazeman though. Down to 17, not broken. And now he's gone. Suffer Basin here trying to escape. Oh, it looks like they found one path. A lot of pressure now is on Froggy. We've got bandits here. They still have their javelins. I know I'm moving the camera around trying to find out where the last battle is going to be. Strange Froggy sent up his forces over here. Isolated. He can't miss it. Attack from a place of strength. See, they're already shaken. And now they're wavering. Break any second one. Bandits here got too close. This next part could spell the end of whoever, whoever is the last standing. Banners did not fire into the Pharisee and Swordmasters. Wrong target. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised the Banners did that. Maybe they're on auto fire. Still the wrong target. The strongest unit left on the field is probably the Pharisee Swordmasters. Is that Froggy's catapult? It is. Oh, 
Oh no. Oh, Foggy's catapult. Is it out? Is that it? Yep, they're done. Bandits here picked clean by the Haven Guard. Must have wiped out all the riders as well, I think. I'm probably all times two speed it. Ninety six to ninety three. Defenders are just going to clinch this one. There's Dr. Doctor's General. You find if he's the last. I think he's going to. I think he is the last soldier in that unit. No, no, there's three of them. There's two others around there somewhere. And that is it. Congratulations to Dr. Doctor 2 and his team on their victory today. So, Dr. Doctor getting 2,608 kills. Anarius, 2,617. Infinity, 2,202. Daba Duba, 1,834. Eclipse, 2,500 of the Dark Cloud, 1,408. Mevin, 2,178. Mr. Stickman, 1,683. Froggy, 1,820. Alrighty, kill count here. Okay, back at Axe Guard here, 132. The other one only got 11 and 45, so two didn't do too well there, unfortunately. Oh, Kronos Legion, though, each got over 100 kills. Oh, uh, ain't kill. Yeah, four out of five got 100, with the fifth getting 91, so he came close. Okay, the Black Footman there ranged from 34 to 106. Of course, that Black Guard, 62 to 193. And so, yeah, Harvest's Caspi, unfortunately, didn't do too well either on 32. Must have been targeted. Still, great match, great map. I can see a lot of potential in that. Thank you to Eclipse Channel for 100 for sending me the replay. If you want to see your own replay featured here on this channel, guys, once again, you can send them to my email at scoutsofentertainment at gmail.com. You can send them to me directly on the Discord via direct message. You can also join my Discord server, Scouts Reconnaissance, where you can post your battle replay into the battle replay sub-channel you'll find there, or tag me in any of those Reforged replay you post on the Third Age Reforged Discord as well. This is Mika on behalf of Scouts of Intent signing off. Goodbye, my fellow scouts. Catch you in the next Total War battle.